Just look at this chonky boy. Now hold on, hold on, don't leave. I know it's not an old Macintosh, but it has a hidden surprise. That's right, after hours of honestly genius level hacking, I got macOS 9 installed on this behemoth. Oh, just ignore this iBook over here. That's probably unrelated. Oh, and ignore this too. That's probably fine. Anyway, today, let's take a look at how I brought this hideous monstrosity to life and then run some software and play some games on what might possibly be the world's worst Macintosh portable. So stay tuned. And if you enjoy taking vintage, interesting electronics from the 70s and 80s and uh, using them wrong, I hope you'll consider subscribing to the channel. Most of the projects we do here make much more sense than what we're trying to do today, but only just. So I have exciting news. I'm moving. We got a new house with a big basement that's perfect to build things like a real workbench and actually display some of my old machines. And there's even enough room that I might be able to actually get my face on camera. But in the process of unpacking, I stumbled upon a cable that's about the closest thing to real magic as you can find. It's this AV cable, which only works on certain later model iBook G3 clamshells like this one right here, my 466 megahertz SE. And this isn't just a weird video out with a headphone style connector. This is composite out and it's specifically meant to mirror the iBooks screen to a TV. So, armed with a few adapters and cables and an RF modulator, we can get both video and audio out of this iBook and into this 1977 Panasonic portable TV. Why? Well, just look at this thing. It just feels like it should be a computer out of Fallout or something. Oh, and this was in Blade Runner too, and if it's good enough for that terrifying technocratic corporate dystopia, well then it's certainly good enough for us. And by the way, do you happen to live in a terrifying technocratic corporate dystopia? Or are you just generally concerned with online privacy? Well, check out the sponsor of today's video, Surfshark VPN. Not only is it incredibly easy to configure, I even got it up and running on OS X Tiger on my PowerBook G4, but their service is fast, reliable, and secure. Now there's plenty of reasons why you might want or need a VPN. Security is the obvious one. If I'm connecting to a Wi-Fi network that I don't own or help manage, I always use a VPN. Then of course, there's also region locked content, which I personally think is a travesty. And it's not just video. Many modern websites now serve completely different experiences to different users based on their location. Using a VPN like Surfshark, you can effectively be in any location just by changing which Surfshark server that you're using. So go to surfshark.deals slash action retro and use code action retro for 83% off and four extra months free. So this TV might look like it's straight out of the 80s with the cool silver and gray color scheme and plastic knobs and this big chunky power switch which is oh so satisfying to flick. But this is actually a Panasonic TR535 released in 1975. I picked this up for five bucks at my favorite place to scrounge for weird old tech, Thunderbird Salvage in Philadelphia. It's kind of like a giant thrift shop, except that most of their inventory comes from doing building clearouts. So there's often a lot of old and really weird stuff. Hey there, buddy. <laughs> now this thing definitely looks like it led a hard life. There is dings and paint on it. Uh, most of the antenna is gone. The radio knob doesn't turn the weird little paper dial inside anymore, although the radio does work. But most importantly, the TV and the audio work perfectly, though it's a bit hard to get video into this thing. The only input is RF, 
those two little screws. So to get composite video into it, we need to go through a few different devices. First is a VHF transformer, which gets us from the two little screws into coaxial. And then the coolest part, we have an RF modulator, which is actually basically a VHF TV station in a little box with a signal so weak that it really only goes through a wire. Although if you get this close enough to the screws, it will start tuning into the station that this thing is outputting, which is pretty neat. And then of course we have our iBook clamshell video cable, which interestingly goes from this little kind of headphone looking jack into video and stereo audio. And um, that's pretty cool because this is a super convenient way to get both audio and video into this modulator and into our TV. And I've been looking for a reason to use this cable as well as just looking for this cable in general for ages now. And uh, this seems like the perfect opportunity because just look at this thing. It's glorious. Now, unfortunately, as you saw earlier, this RF modulator seems to be a bit finicky and uh, kind of loses connection or stops broadcasting if you bump it and you have to like shake it around and that's super annoying. So I think I'm gonna send this one back and I just got in this one today from the Simple Co with a C for the S, I guess. But this one works great. And actually the audio is way clearer uh, which is super impressive. Now, what good is a Macintosh portable without a suitable keyboard? And uh, I wanna go with this one, which is my Apple Extended Keyboard 2, the wonderful clicky mechanical keyboard that everybody loves. The only problem is this is an ADB keyboard and uh, our iBook clamshell, that's only USB. Luckily, I have this cool tiny adapter, which is the Dracware ADB to USB, which simply takes ADB and gives you a micro USB out, which you can then just connect straight up to your USB computer. It's an incredibly cool device and you can even create custom key maps on modern machines using Dracware's software and it works with most ADB input devices, although unfortunately it does not seem to play nice with my Kensington ADB trackball, which really would have completed the Macintosh portable look. I mean, just compare this to the real Macintosh portable here. Yeah, basically indistinguishable. Okay, so let's connect everything together here. So this has two sets of screw terminals on the back. The bottom two say VHF and the top two are for UHF, but strangely enough, this seems to work better when I kind of straddle the two types of connector. So if I put one down on VHF and then one up here on UHF, that gives me a way cleaner picture and I have no idea why. Next, we take our The Simple Co RF modulator, which again is a TV station in a little box. And this one's actually pretty nice because it has a channel select between channel three and channel four. Yeah, the other box only did channel four. So I'm gonna leave this on channel three and we'll see if uh, there's any difference between the two. And then we take our connectors from the iBook cable, yellow for video, and then red and white for audio. And there we go. We have an iBook specific tiny television station broadcasting on channel three VHF. And this just connects to the little headphone looking jack with the little picture of a screen here because it's actually our goofy video out. And then for our keyboard here, we have our little Dracware ADB to USB. And all we need to do is connect ADB into the ADB port on the Dracware. And then just hook it up to our keyboard. And if we had an ADB mouse, we could daisy chain that off of the keyboard as well off of the other side because there's an ADB port here. 
And then we take micro USB and I'm going to put that into a USB hub here. Because we need a mouse and I'm just going to use this wireless mouse here. And we're set to channel three already. So let's uh, open the iBook. Okay, so after much fiddling, this is about as clear as I can get the picture. And uh, much like an old school TV would, moving the antenna around definitely interferes with the signal that we're getting. So I think it's still picking up interference from the non-existent analog airwaves. So just the background radiation of the universe is interfering with our Macintosh portable clone. But check this out. We've got sound. That's right. These sounds are coming straight out of the TV. How cool is that? So let me bring it a little bit closer so you can see this screen in all of its fuzzy glory. And uh, if you see some more patterns in here, that's actually in the signal itself. That is not an artifact of the camera. But I really want to try this with some Mac games, kind of like the world's most convoluted and powerful Apple Pippin. Oh yeah. <laughs> oh, look at that. It kind of, uh, kind of feels right. <laughs> okay, this is actually kind of amazing. The sound is perfect. Oh, I don't want to go in there. The screen has a little bit of distortion, but it adds to the ambience. I can see all my displays just fine. Not my best run of Wolfenstein 3D, but <laughs> perhaps my most interesting, or at least my fuzziest. But yeah, perfectly playable. Definitely gives me NES in the basement at my mom's house vibes. All right, how about some Unreal Tournament and uh, Quite hard to see the intro cinematic here. <laughs> but quite hilarious on this screen. Now I'm terrible at Unreal Tournament on a normal screen. So let's see what this tiny screen is like. Well, I'm playing with the brightness and contrast here to try to get a little bit of a better picture. Oops. <laughs> I'm already dead. Hey, I drew first blood. <laughs> Yeah, I can barely see what's going on on this screen, but it's silky smooth on this nice black and white CRT. Hey, I killed somebody. I killed two people. <laughs> awesome. Uh oh. Hey, I'm on a roll. Okay, let's try something that should be a much better test of the feasibility of gaming on this tiny CRT screen. This is Warcraft 2, where we're gonna have to look at tiny stuff and move it around on a play field. The cinematic is pretty cool though. Of the suffering they had faced at the hands of the orcish 
awful. Warcraft 2, The Tides of Darkness. And uh, surprisingly, I can read this menu. New campaign will be the Orcs. The Horde is preparing to launch an assault the of It sounds so good on this TV. Well, I cannot read the tips. I also cannot see how much gold or wood that I have. But hey, I can see these guys. Oh. I forgot, Warcraft 2 has a bug where if your processor is too fast, the screen scrolls way too fast. But that's a problem with Warcraft and not with the TV. Uh, huh. I cannot see what I'm doing. Um, I guess I need to build a farm, which I think is the first one. I think he's building a farm. Um, let's make this guy go explore. Okay, well, this is basically unplayable. <laughs> and I'm dying. Well, I lost my guy. Which I can barely see his decaying corpse. <laughs> And actually, if I drag the view reticle up in the top left, it's not too bad. I'm going to go ahead and say that uh, real-time strategy games are not a good fit for this CRT. But of course, we need to see how web browsing works, because what good is a Mac if we can't get on the internet? And a Mac portable is pretty bad on the internet. Our bootleg Mac portable here should at least be faster. So we'll click on Classilla here. Ooh, it's getting real wavy. <laughs> That's fine. Hey, I can read it. The Classilla archive page, because unfortunately Classilla has been discontinued. So let's go to frog find. I cannot read the address bar at all. Well, it loads pages much quicker than a real Mac portable, although I think the screen is a lot less sharp than that beautiful LCD that the portable came with. So let's search for Panasonic portable TV. So yeah, it's reasonable. I can almost read this, but not quite. And I'm pretty sure if I tried to read a whole article on here, uh, I would get nauseous. I've got the Wikipedia page on CRTs. See, look at that. Totally readable on our bootleg Macintosh portable. So that'll do it for our bootleg Macintosh portable. And I don't know why it's so funny to me running Mac OS 9.2 on this 70s portable TV, but I just think this is glorious. And you know, our little bootleg here does have some advantages over the real Macintosh portable, which if you'll remember, didn't have a battery in it. And the original one didn't even have a backlit LCD screen. Here we've got this bright, beautiful, if not kind of fuzzy CRT screen, which is great for playing video games. Now, of course, the Macintosh Portable does have some benefits over our bootleg version. Well, namely that it's a real computer and not just a TV connected to an iBook G3. But we can forgive that because, well, I love this thing. So we'll have some more kind of silly videos as I'm in the process of moving, but We'll resume big projects once I'm in my new space, and uh, it's going to be awesome. But anyway, if you enjoyed this video, I'd appreciate a thumbs up. And if you'd like to see more nonsensical Macintosh shenanigans like this, please subscribe down below. And thank you very much for watching. And a special thanks to Chris Nelson, Chris Algreta, Stig124, Justin D. Morgan, Greg Hrutke from Hrutke Mods, 
Chris Calderon and Nick Hamsey, who are my highest tiered patrons and all of my Patreon supporters for helping to make these videos possible.